In this class I'll show you how to create stepping coupe animation, how to manage lighting and render settings for this scene. I'll cover up my settings in methods for fighting. Optimize settings for render. On screen you are seeing the result of this class and if you like this let's start to explore. We start this class from building geometry, then setting the loop animation and lighting. This class is done with Redshift, as you see in Overview, but you can repeat this in any render engine. Let's start from building our geometry. I use one plugin called Drop to Floor. I think it's free and you can find it in the internet. What it does, it stack object on the floor. Now I create some cylinders. That we'll use to make holes in our geometry. I will use boolean. I use holding alt and left mouse click to build this setup and we pack cylinder 1, 2 and 3. I create one more cube, use drop to floor and drop it to boolean. Set the small size, so we have this cutting segments, show, move, and this is our geometry. We'll have to create some more element, some details here, and we need to select all boolean, create single object, hide your edges, go into cylinders, up rotation segments, so we have enough segment in cutting, maybe even more. Now I select boolean, hold alg, add bevel, put it here into null, go to use angle threshold, and we have this beautiful bevel. Add few dimensions to subdivision. Lower the offset and next step we'll build the animation. We'll rename this null to cube, disable bevel for faster update and we can disable all our elements, boolean and keep only cube here, move it to the side so our angle is set to the pivot or zero point, create null, set to cube, change the orientation and I want to set it into the middle of the edge. And I'll create one more, I'm holding control and then shift to bring snapping here. If I hold Ctrl and Shift together, I don't have sampling. So holding Ctrl, start to move, add Shift, and we have this snapping. One, two, three, four. Create this kind of parenting. Simple animation into 30 frames, rotate, then to from 30 to 60, rotate, fix point, 3 point, and add a few frames, 
for our fourth null. Like this. And we'll have this simple animation. I can go to our elements and check animation. I'm holding Ctrl Shift and remove all unusable points of animation. Now I select all of them, going to show F curves, select all the points and move these tangents to the side. And then I set zero angle. Now we'll have more accelerate animation. We can even delete the end frame so we don't have the duplication. Our animation is ready. After building basic animation, we have to create some stage. I create cube, cylinder, up it maybe to 250, lowering the radius, add small fillet, for example with radius 1, maybe 2, select cube, fillet 2, it's like this, create you know, put them together, create cloner, move it to the cloner, going to grid array, set 2 by 1 by 2, and this will be our stage. Now we have to put it below our cube, and this is our beautiful animation. And you'll see we have some gap here. We need to go to cylinder, up segments, and now it looks very round. This is our base element, so we create base null. One more time, we go to cloner, go into grid array, maybe one, four by four, and put base there. Render instances. Now I go and delete, I mean unenable all our boolean mathematic to improve their workflow speed. Extend, it's like 1200, 1200, then set to per step to increase our scene if we need this. This is too much similar. We're going to base, create instance, put it here, rotate to 90 degrees, and you'll see that nothing happened because in cloner we have to disable fixed clone option. I will have two version. I duplicate base instances once again. Rotate to 90 degrees. And then once again to 90 degrees. And it looks like this. I go to corner and instead of iterate mode, I will pick up random mode. And we have some random. Now I create camera, go into isometric, going to redshift settings, brute force, maybe two brute force, or you can use global illumination or GI diffusing octane. We'll set our camera to our stage. As I said, we need to increase our cubes number and it looks like this. Then we use instances just to 
keep reference to this base object and if we enable everything here the same settings goes to our instances our scene is ready to be lighted and to set some materials close and fold this create redshift render view move it here hit play go into camera create some material I think we can use some yellowish with roughness and apply to base create new little variation in color in roughness apply to the second and the same logic for another object three and four like this very subtle difference but I think it works and now we have to create area light move it up I rotate it in the wrong direction up and we see that there are a lot of illumination going on here we can disable it in preview so illumination off lowering the intensity multiplier up value and maybe move it slight upper and maybe three and then move it a bit higher and that's what we'll get let me re-upload cloner random and you'll see that the difference is very subtle and I dislike this cube smoothing I think we can go to our cloner stage to cube to cloner tag to cube tag and set for tangle to 10 and now we should have flat surface or even disable cube tag at all yes flat surface that's what I was looking for now we can add more variation to color because it doesn't look very different or even small different oh I know why this happening we use instances and if we use base color for example set to purple all instances will get the same color if we move our color to cloner we'll have different colors here because instances are taking color from their instance object I think this looks pretty nice we have to add one more element maybe in here yes perfectly center and our animation is ready our lighting is ready and now we have to set proper render settings in this last section we're going to change render settings for better and faster rendering 
I go into our render settings, go into optimization. We don't have refraction here, transparency. I decrease this thing. And this is kind of open scene. So maybe light bounce once, two, three, three, four times. So we can lower our reflections. And now we're going to view our samples. And the logic of this, let me set bucket size to 64, is that white areas is where we have maximum samples. The darker, the lower number of samples is. And we have to find proper settings to avoid pure white zone. I disabled brute force for now. I go into basic settings, up samples maybe to 100. 28 and you'll see we get clearly result multiply by 2 pretty nice I think maybe reflections can improve here yes and some of the zones that looks like shadows because they are inside we're going to area light to samples and set higher value for example 1000 and we get great result. I think this is almost noise free render up a bit because inside of the cubes we have a lot of white. Now it's gone. And one more thing, the lower the threshold is, the higher number of samples will be in place. So you'll see that with our settings I up threshold and we don't have white zone so not of these maximum values 2000 500 200 never raised in these zones the lower our threshold the more white places we see usually i use this kind of settings and if you have powerful pc you can lower it to maybe to this one and we have four seconds five seconds at brute force it brings this beautiful light bouncing and if you have power pc you can use both brute force with higher value for example 1000 or you can use irradiance point cache for the second method it improves render time so with brute force let me check the render time bucket are going to fill the screen we have 10 and a half seconds radiance point cloud and i think we get some render time being reduced 14 seconds oh that's strange that's strange but this could happen so i stick with brute force and one more trick i going to bucket size and set it to maximum and let's check render time seven seconds instead of 10. I think this is okay. Going to GI, maybe decrease in a half. And let's set to regular image and check the quality. For me, it's pretty clean. We're going here and up some intensity. Pretty nice. Going to ray and decrease gloss affection. So I'd like to have bright image, but with no specular overexposure and extend a bit scale. Four and a half. And this is it. Then we go to save and put here the path to your render. I use TIFF format, upload to After Effects as image sequence and doing composting stuff. And of course, all frames. Thank you for attending this class. And I think you'll get some new knowledges about render optimization, about planning of your looping animation and rendering this thing out. Have a nice day.